Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Badminton World. This time we're in Odense in Denmark, a city with a population of a little over 167,000 people and a history that dates back more than a thousand years. A 16th century meeting place of parliaments, Odense today is an important commercial hub and attracts tourists to some of its famous landmarks including the childhood home of Hans Christian Andersen, the celebrated fairy tale writer, who is as much a part of the quintessential Danish culture as are its bicycles and the sport of badminton. And it was a perfect marriage between at least two of them at this year's Yonex Denmark Open, a tournament that has since 1935 held aloft the story of Europe's greatest badminton pride. We have an amazing uh, badminton culture here in Denmark. We have this club system, which is very old and very rare in, uh, in Europe. I think that's the main reason why we, pro why we make such good players all the time. We are only a population of five million, but uh, we have a lot of uh, badminton halls around in, in every uh, small village. Uh, so it's always been tradition. We always had some of, some of the best uh, world-class players the last uh, yeah, 60 years or so. And one such genuine world-class talent to have kept this Scandinavian country in the big league over the last 15 years is Peter Gaida. The man who took over completely in the new millennium after the exit of his predecessor, the 1996 Olympic champion, Paul Eric Hoyer Larsen. But at 34, and pretty much in the autumn of his playing career, Gaida still awaits a career-defining maiden Olympic glory. But he put all those thoughts on the back burner, crushing the unseeded Mark Zwiebler in straight games to advance to the quarters, thus staying on course to joining a select few Danes with four or more Denmark Open titles. Well, we have a big uh, tradition, you know, and uh, we've always had good players. Um, this is a very tough sport, you know. The, you know, the Asians are very are dominating this, uh, especially the Chinese. Uh, but also Malaysia, Korea, Indonesia and other Asian countries. So we are this, you know, maybe England, they have one pair once in a while, but otherwise, beside that, uh, we are the only nation that can really compete with the, uh, with the Asians. In the early stages of his career, Gaida was at the top of world rankings between 1998 and 2001. And his influence on Danish badminton today is similar to that of past legends like Morten Frost, Erland Kops and Hoyer Larsen. But who will it be from generation next that can inherit and carry this illustrious legacy? It's always difficult to, to be the next Peter Gade and everybody is, is talking about this, but uh, I think we have uh, a young talent, uh, Victor Axelsen. I think um, if, if you have to put a title on it, I think uh, he's going to be uh, the, the future of, of Danish badminton. I mean, we have Janu Jansen and, uh, and Vitinghus as well, but uh, Victor, he's only uh, 17 years old. I think maybe we, we have a good, good chance with, with uh, Victor. Victor Axelsson, I think he, he can maybe take over after Peter, but it is very difficult because Peter is a big legend and he's been on the top for like 10, 15 years almost now. So it, it will be very tough to, to take over, over from him. Ask the man himself and the consensus is loud and clear. Obviously, uh, it looks like Victor is, is going to do that. Uh, but also you got Jan and you got uh, Hans Christian Wissinghus. Uh, uh, you know, they have shown in the, in the past couple of months and also in the past years that they have the ca capability of doing it. And the young Victor Axelsson vindicated all the hype surrounding him, pulling off a massive giant killing act in the men's single second round match against Indonesian great Taufik Hidayat. And he's done it. A disappointing error in the end from Taufik Hidayat. A month shy of his 18th birthday, Axelsson is still largely a freshman at the senior level, but he's already having to learn handling the constant comparisons that he attracts, with none other than the greatest of his ill. Yeah, I get that question quite a lot. Um, actually, I don't think uh, so much about it, you know. Uh, I try to, you know, not to, to be the next Peter Gator, just to be uh, the new Victor Axelsson and to be myself, I think. We have a different style of play, um, but of course um, I would like to achieve um, what Peter has achieved, but I think uh, 
I'm trying to go my own way. The winner of the boys' singles category at last year's World Junior Championships, Axelsson is the first European to hold the title, but his eyes are now firmly set on the senior circuit. My dream is to be the, the best, my dream and goal is to be the best uh, men's singles players in the world, so of course I will do uh, everything I can to, to win some of the big championships like the Olympics, the World Championships and all England. Ranked 44th in the world, the forthcoming London Olympics may still be a long shot for the teenager, but not quite so for the third Dane in round two, world number 13, Jan Jorgensen, who went through to the quarters from the bottom half of the draw, comfortably beating Du Pengu in three games in the end. But world number two, Lin Dan, made a shock exit in round number two while top seed Lee Chong Wei advanced to the last eight, as did the third seed Chen Long. But there was no such luck for Tinny Baum, Denmark's lone representative in the women's singles. The eighth seed going down to the up-and-coming Inthanon Runchanok of Thailand in straight games. Yu Xin of China, India's Sina Nawal and Germany's Julian Schenk were among the other seeded players upset in the same round. Meanwhile, the third seeded men's doubles pair of Karsten Mogensen and Matthias Bo kept the Danish flag flying, sailing through to the last eight after beating the Japanese pair of Haryuki Endo and Kenichi Hayakawa 21-16, 21-16. And there was more good news for the host nation as both their star mixed doubles pairs made it to the last eight from each half of the draw. While top seeds Wang Chao Li and Yu Yang cruised to the women's doubles quarterfinals, which also featured the second and sixth seeds. Coming up on Badminton World, the battle gets intense in the round of eight. But we find out on the sidelines what it is that sets one racket apart from another. That story after the break. In the BWF Men's Singles Super Series rankings, Li Chong Wei is number one, followed by China's Lin Dan and Denmark's Peter Gaida. Compatriots Chen Long and Chen Jin occupy the next two spots, followed by Taufik Hidiat at six. Kenichi Tago and Du Peng Yu swap the seventh and eighth places, while Simon Santoso and Wang Zhengming do the same for ninth and tenth. In the women's single Super Series rankings, Wang Shishan continues to lead, while Wang Yihan and Wang Jin complete China's domination at the top. Julian Schenk has moved to fourth, pushing Sena Newal to fifth, while Jian Yan Zhao drops to sixth. Tinny Baun is one up at seven, followed by Sayaka Sato. Zhuang Gu breaks into the top ten, while Xiao Che Cheng is tenth. Welcome back to Badminton World. We're in Odense, the third largest city of Denmark that's been the proud host of the Yonex Denmark Open for the fifth year running. And in that time, witness to the rise of two Danish men's singles champions. And the local Danes knew the onus this year would surely fall on the winner of the all-Danish quarterfinal clash between national hero Peter Gaeta and 17-year-old rising star Victor Axelsson. Onto the match, and Gator had made a great start, winning the opening game 21-15, before stumbling dramatically in the next game 22-24. But the 34-year-old veteran came back strongly to close the match with a fine 21-14 win in the final set. The win taking the three-time Denmark Open champion to the last four while also signalling the end of a promising show by a youngster in his own backyard. It was a great, uh, a great experience for me to play against Peter here on home ground and in Odense in front of this amazing uh, crowd. Um, yeah, the game was, was a bit up and down, uh, but I think uh, I played quite uh, well second set and I'm proud of that. But Gator was required to play possibly his best badminton of the tournament if he had to contain the top seed Li Chong Wei in the first semi-final. Yeah! 
Sadly, that wasn't to be, as the current world number one edged past the former in two games that went right down to the wire. Great match. Calm in a crisis. Lee Chong-Wei survived those four game point opportunities. A standing ovation from the crowd here in Ornsa. In the final, Lee now faced the third seed, Chen Long, who had the better of Sho Sasaki in the second semi-final. Meanwhile, Wang Yi Han took on Inthanon Rachanok in the first women's singles semi-final after she got a walkover in the previous round. But the top seed showed no rustiness in seeing off her unseeded Thai opponent, cruising to the final with a clinical 21-14, 21-6 victory to set up an all-Chinese final clash with third seed Wang Jin. The result may once again highlight China's might as a superpower in world badminton. But the sport's world governing body is keen to take the game to the grassroots level around the world. BWF are working hard at the moment on putting together a schools, schools program, a schools initiative. And the title is going to be Shuttle Time. Uh, we've spent 12 months developing the actual resource and the resource is just about ready now and we're running pilot projects at the moment on each of the five continents. We've got projects going on at the moment in Morocco for Africa, in uh, Tonga for Oceania, in the Maldives, in Asia. So it's really interesting at the moment, we've got lots of different projects. Puerto Rico will start next week. We've got Brazil coming online as well. Ian Wright is a TV commentator and one of the brains behind Shuttle Time. He explains how this project is aimed at getting the best out of amateur badminton instructors in school. We're not trying to make um, the physical education teachers into coaches, but we're trying to give them just enough knowledge so they can deliver a fun, positive experience of our sport badminton. So the resource actually looks like 22 lesson plans that are ready made for the teachers. There's a manual that backs that up that gives them all the support and information they'll need. And when they go on the net to click on the lesson that they're going to use, they can click in the box and they actually get a video clip of what the exercise looks like, how to set it up for their kids, how it'll work, etc. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the teachers who, in a lot of areas of the world, have got no badminton experience at all. Back in Odense, Koreans Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Dae beat the Indonesian pair of Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan in a tough three setter. Look at the delight from Lee Yong Dae. They've come through a difficult match. The victory taking them to the final against top seeds Sai Hyun and Fu Hai Feng. Meanwhile, women's doubles second seeds Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei stopped the gallant run of the unseeded Danes Lina Dantia Cruz and Maria Rupke 21-12, 21-5. An easy win to set up a final clash with fellow Chinese and top seeds Wang Zhao Li and Yu Yang for the third time in a Super Series tournament this calendar year. And while the winners approached the final day, it was time to take a closer look at their armoury. Racket stringer Jesper Hofgaard shedding some light on what sets two rackets apart. Some rackets can vary from being more flexible, more stiff. So, and, and each player has a, has a has their own wishes from what they want in a racket. Some some uh, player wants uh, a racket that is uh, head heavy or head light. In a head heavy racket, you play you can get a harder smash, but in a head light racket, you can move it faster through the wind. But no racket is world class until it's got the best strings attached. About 90% play with the Yonex BG80. That is the that is the best string to play with because it's it's the most sensible string and it's also pretty durable and, uh, and it's pretty rough uh, on, the, on the surface so it's, yeah, it has good grip in the shuttle uh, and at the same time it's, uh, it's made from, from, from a polyester and nylon material with a bit of Vectron in it to give it a bit more stability and, and strength. And putting his Yonex racket to good use, double specialist Joachim Fischer Nielsen and his partner Christina Pedersen sailed through to the last four of the mixed doubles, where they faced top seeds Zhang Nan and Zhao Yun Lai. In 
a battle of equals. The two shared the first two games before the Danes squeezed past the Chinese in a thrilling finish in the decider to reach their second successive Super Series final. Well, that is extraordinary. Joachim Fischer and Christina Peterson keep their unbeaten record against the current world champions. The duo now had just one barrier in the form of fifth seed Zhu Chen and Ma Jin in their quest for the season's first Super Series triumph. Coming up on Badminton World, the final day in Odense when the Titans clash and the coming together of Denmark's best mixed doubles pair of the moment. Welcome back to Badminton World. We're in Odense for this year's Yonex Denmark Open, the ninth stop in the 2011 BWF Super Series calendar and one of the only five Super Series Premier events. Ranked fourth in the BWF World Team Rankings, Denmark has always been a badminton powerhouse and globally one of the sport's top destinations. And it's no surprise why the players, especially the local stars, love playing here. Of course, it's, it's always really fun to play in Denmark at home. Uh, it's a special feeling every time we go on court. Uh, the crowd is amazing here uh, and they support us so good. And the support was extreme for Denmark's only representatives in action on the final day. The mixed doubles pair of Christina Pedersen and Joachim Fischer-Nielsen, who faced the Chinese Zhu Chen and Ma Jin. The Danes won a nervy opening game, but settled down well to close the match with greater ease in the next game. 22-20, 21-16, the final score. The win giving the pair their first Super Series triumph of the season and also making it the fourth successive Danish triumph in mixed doubles in Odense. It's a great feeling right now. Uh, we've been playing really good this week uh, here in Odense. Uh, and it's just a great feeling to, to be here and have, a, and have won the whole tournament. That's easily the highlight of one sweet journey that the pair have undertaken since they got together a few years ago by a quirk of fate. We started playing uh, together three and a half years ago, uh, but I had a partner uh, who got, got a very bad injury and, uh, and then Christina was, uh, well, uh, I wanted to play with Christina and, uh, and we started uh, playing together and it has been a big, uh, big success. And along the line, the two have managed to pick up a few memorable victories, even outside of Denmark, spread here and there. There has been many. Uh, but this is one of uh, our favorite moments. Uh, our win in Hong Kong uh, a year ago, our bronze at Wells in 2009. We have, we have many good victories together and, and we just enjoy to play together. Runners up at the previous Super Series in Japan, the world's fourth ranked mixed doubles pair are currently in red hot form. So what's been the secret behind their sudden surge? We have a really good team at home. Uh, we're practicing uh, with Camilla and Thomas every day, the other uh, mixed up from Denmark. Uh, and I think it's the key to, to be as good as we are. A maiden Olympics together next year should now be even closer for the duo. But the left-hand, right-hand combination knows they can't afford to be blinkered by that goal at this stage. The Olympics uh, is our main goal this season. Uh, it's not uh, all the time in our minds because then we can't be focused uh, uh, like, uh, like we've been here in Odense. Um, but of course it's, it's the big main goal for us. Meanwhile it was another battle for momentum in their race to London 2012 between the Chinese top seeds and second seeds in the women's doubles final. 
Wang Zhao Li and Yu Yang eventually getting the better of Xiang Qing and Zhao Yunlai in straight games for their fourth Super Series triumph of the year. While in the men's doubles, Chinese Sai Yun and Fu Hai Feng were playing their fifth straight Super Series final. And up against them were the sturdy Koreans, Yung Jae Sung and Li Yong Dae. But the second seeds proved too good for the top seeds, as they went on to snatch the match 21-16, 21-17. The win giving them their third Super Series title this year. Meanwhile, Chinese youngster Wang Yihan stood on the brink of winning a second successive Denmark Open trophy as she took on compatriot Wang Jin in the women's singles final. But that wasn't to be, as the third seed got the better of her higher rated opponent in straight games, well inside an hour. And this time she takes it. Delight for Wang Xin reports her first ever victory over the current world champion Wang Yihan. Down to the men's singles final, and all eyes were on Chen Long, who it seemed had been enjoying every bit of his stay in Denmark so far, except, well, the Danish cuisine. I've enjoyed everything here so far. The infrastructure, the facilities and the environment are all good. The only thing I'm not satisfied with is the food. But the Chinese world number three has shown enough stomach for the season's first hat-trick of Super Series titles having just triumphed in China and Japan. I was a little surprised to win the title because I never expected myself to do so, but I took the best out of my basic training. And it all began at home in September when he beat compatriot Chen Jin in the final of the China Masters for his first triumph of the season. I'm very happy to have won the title in my home country, but I just take it as any other tournament victory. All of 22, Long has already bagged top honours at the Sudiman Cup, besides having been part of the gold medal winning Chinese teams at the Asian Games and Thomas Cup last year. And if he can keep his form going, an Olympics medal next summer shouldn't be far away for the youngster from Xiamen. And he took a giant stride in that direction in the men's singles final, where for the second successive Super Series event this year, he faced world number one, Li Chong Wei. The informed Chinese made the early statement with an easy 21-15 opening game win. Long taking the game after this extended rally ending just inside. Oh, that's right into the corner. Another misjudgment from Lee Chong Wei. Long carried the momentum well into the next game, not allowing the experienced Malaysian to settle down, eventually taking the game 21 18. Chen Long of China has won three consecutive Super Series titles. His first ever Premier Super Series title. The win making him the first man this year to win three back-to-back -back Super Series titles. China, Japan and now Denmark, all witness to the rise of a new star in men's singles. We leave you now with some standout moments from the 2011 Yonex Denmark Super Series. can now log on to the BWF's official live streaming channel hosted by YouTube, the world's largest online video community. Just type in badmintonworld.tv for all the live badminton action from around the planet.
Also enjoy access to a feast of match highlights, behind-the-scenes footage and player profiles on the online version of the Badminton World magazine show. All this only on www.badmintonworld.tv.